Imagine with me for just a moment, you're in your next teacher interview, you're calm, you're poised, you're confident. You're ready to stand out amongst one, 10, or even 100 candidates because you're armed with some out-of-the-box strategies that are going to help you stand out in front of the next panel where they say, we need this person on our team. In today's episode, you're going to get those out-of-the-box tactics. Grab a pen, a piece of paper, get ready to take some notes because we're starting right now. Hey everybody, Gordon Emerson here, Superintendent of Schools and Gallup Certified Strengths Coach. And on this channel, we leverage my experience from classroom teacher to school district superintendent to help you go further faster in your education and educational leadership journey. If this is your first time with us, don't forget to hit that subscribe button as well as the bell notification so you don't miss any cool updates or any of our newest episodes. All right, everybody, so it is 2024. And at the time of this recording, it is entering the spring of 2024, and we're entering our peak season for hiring. Job positions are flying left and right. Districts are looking for new teachers. People are declaring retirement. People are leaving the profession, and there are gonna be lots of opportunities for new people to come in, new people to take positions, new people to transfer, new places and spaces for you to learn and grow and get your position as an educational professional. And that's what we're here to help you do. But this is a new environment. It is 2024. And so we've got new theories, new thoughts, new perspectives that you're gonna wanna bring to the table, that you're gonna wanna think through, that you're gonna wanna showcase and share your insights, your thoughts, your perspectives on. So in today's episode, we really wanna kinda start to think about some things that are outside of the box. I'm going beyond what's your classroom management policy? I'm going beyond how are you gonna communicate with parents? I'm going beyond how are you gonna collaborate with your colleagues? Those things you can check out right here in some of our previous episodes, some of our previous videos. But today we're gonna think outside of the box. We're gonna stretch this a little bit. I wanna give you some additional things to think about, some additional things that are gonna help you stand out because we're going to talk about some things that most people aren't going to be talking about in the interview. So without further ado, let's jump in to strategy number one. Okay, strategy number one. You're going to showcase your digital literacy and technological integration skills. It's a mouthful, but hang with me. Ever since the release of ChatGPT, the world is different. Now I know depending on where you are and depending on what your experience has been, depending on what your your perspective is, you may be completely against ChatGPT and that's okay. But at some point, I think you're gonna have to change your perspective because your digital literacy and your technological integration skills is gonna be tied inextricably with AI and a platform like ChatGPT, or it may be Bard, or it may be Leonardo, it may be some other AI platform, but the reality is you're gonna want to start to showcase your ability to learn, grow, develop, and enhance the learning environment using these types of technology platforms, using these types of innovative opportunities that are out there. As a superintendent, I'm pushing, I'm, I'm nudging our staff to learn more about AI, to explore it, to incorporate it, quite frankly, to embrace it because it is the world that we are going to live in. Here's a perspective and think about this as you kind of delve in your mind into how might I incorporate this into a teacher interview? Imagine a world where you, as a classroom teacher, are not the most knowledgeable person in the room. Now, as uncomfortable as maybe that might sound, and maybe not as uncomfortable for somebody who's going to be a first year teacher versus somebody who's a 15th year or 20th or 25th year teacher, but the reality is AI and platforms that exist have leveled the playing field. So how do we, as education professionals, showcase our skills, showcase our willingness to learn, 
increase our literacy, increase our learning, and then incorporate it, incorporate that into the learning opportunities for our students. If we're not thinking about how we do that, and listen, shout out to the OGs, some of my, some of my closest friends, or OGs, they still have chalkboards and chalk in their classrooms. No disrespect, some of the best classroom teachers, as far as engaging, connecting, and building relationships with students, some of the best I've ever seen. But if they were sitting in front of me right now, I'd be telling them that they need to do the same thing. Find ways to become more digitally literate, find ways to be more open to integrating technology into your instructional practice, because it is the world that our students know, understand, embrace, and expect. So think about how do you build that into your teacher interview? Because again, this is not your run of the mill type of thinking or type of response. This is like, what are you going to create in your classroom? How are you going to be different? How are you going to push the innovative opportunities that are out there? How are you going to humble yourself? I'm not the smartest person in the room. As a matter of fact, anybody who has one of these is now, could be potentially the smartest person in the room. Somebody with this, could be the smartest person on the planet if they know how to use and leverage that technology. This is not, this is not hypothetical. This is reality. And so what I'm asking you to think about as a candidate who might sit in front of a person like me or sit in front of a principal, sit in front of a hiring panel, how are you going to showcase that you're willing to humble yourself to think about how do I do it better and different leveraging technology, how do I do it better and different, focusing on being a continuous learner for the betterment of my kids, for the betterment of my students. How do I do that? That's what we're looking for. That's what I'm asking for. That's what I'm pushing on. That's what so many superintendents and so many principals and so many people who are bringing in educators into the profession, that's what we're focused on. The technology, the digital literacy, and the willingness to find ways to incorporate it authentically into the work that you do. Find ways to do that, and you are gonna stand out as a candidate. Find those ways. That's gonna be a path to being really, really highly sought after as a candidate, all right? So that's strategy number one. All right, so as we get ready to delve into strategy number two, uh, share with us in the comments below What's one strategy or skill that you think every modern or contemporary teacher needs to have and incorporate into their classroom practice to be effective? What's one skill that every contemporary teacher, new teacher, modern teacher, what do they need to have to be successful and effective in their classroom? Share that with us in the comments below and let's move to strategy number two. And strategy number two, I want you to think about how do you, in the context of your interview, how do you highlight your adaptability and continuous learning mindset. This is, this is one of those soft skills that you really wanna think about. How do you articulate this? Because the ability to showcase and highlight your adaptability and that you're willing to be a continuous learner, that you're on this, you're on this path, you're on this journey towards being a lifelong learner, is your ability to be resilient, to be nimble, to be adaptable, to be fluid in the moment when standards are changing, when assessment is changing, when some of the pressures and the nuances of things that are happening in our communities and in our environments are changing and the ground is shifting under our feet. And never mind, back to strategy number one, the innovative exponential changes that are taking place with respect to artificial intelligence and metaverse and blockchain and just really leveraging technology You've got to be adaptable. You've got to be out of the box. You've got to be in this continuous learning mode. So how do you convey that? You convey that around looking for tons of opportunities around how you professionally develop, how you professionally grow, how you're open to exploring new ideas and new concepts, going to different places, engaging with different groups, 
being parts of different social circles, being parts of different intellectual circles, being part of different professional learning communities that will give you a wide perspective, a wide view for the benefit of your students. Because all of this, being adaptable, being a lifelong learner, continuously learning and engaging is all for the benefit of what you can take from those experiences, bring it back to your classroom, bring it back to your school site, bring it back to your school community to help your scholars get better. Help them to be better learners, help them to be better humans, help them to be better leaders. How you just demonstrate that, how you display that in the interview is going to be necessary to standing out. I want you to stand out. So I want you to think about some of these out of the box ideas and how you incorporate it to differentiate yourself because that's what we need. We need people who are going to differentiate themselves and differentiate their learning and their, and their leadership of students in their classrooms. No more status quo. Status quo is not good enough anymore. Not in my opinion and not in the opinion of many, many, many people in our communities. Many of our leaders We're looking for transformation. We're looking for exponential growth, not status quo, not just incremental. But how do we go deep and how do we create you know, exponential opportunities for our students? I think we create that by opening ourselves up to be that type of learner, by opening ourselves up to be adaptable, to be flexible, to be dynamic and resilient, and to be open, open to the new opportunities that are going to present, present themselves to us, open to the new opportunities that are going to constantly be around the next corner, around and through the next door, be the type of educator, be the type of professional who's going to seek those things out by being adaptable and by continually thirsting for more and more learning opportunities and more and more learning experiences. That's what we need. And that's what we're looking for. And that's what I'm asking you to convey in your next interview. That's going to be a key. So being sure that you can highlight your adaptability and your commitment to continuous learning and the mindset behind it. That's strategy number two. All right, strategy number three, where the rubber meets the road. Find ways in your interview to demonstrate your impact on student success beyond academic achievement. Our scholars are more than a set of test scores and a set of grade markings on a report card. They are more than that. And I don't think we can continue to be disingenuous about treating or acting like they are just test scores and they are just performance rankings and they are just grades. They are human beings that we pour our time, effort, and energy into. And some of the takeaways that we get with our students that are non-academic in nature become the best lifelong lessons for them. You know, it, it's, it's not uncommon that over the years that I'll have a student that will come back and see me um, who I taught or who I coached or who I served as their principal. And I find it interesting. They'll come back in, in various forms of success, success in business, success in uh, family life, success in a number of different ways. And many times their interaction with me is about something that I shared with them, something that they took away that was not about the page of a book, the assignment that I made them write, the project that I made them create, but rather it's usually a story about how I made them feel or how we interacted or something that we did together, something that created a memory, something that created a spark in them that helped them along the way while also pouring into them academically. But let's go beyond 
Let's go above and beyond for kids. Let's go above and beyond for the young people who we are privileged to be able to spend time with. Let's go above and beyond for the scholars and their families who deserve to get a quality educational experience that they can then take out to help create a much more democratic society and a democratic world for us. I think about all the opportunities that we have to work with students, to create wonderful opportunities for them. And at the end of the day, I'm investing in them because that investment is going to pay dividends to me for the world that they create for me as I get older. And for my kids, for my kids' kids. This is why we do education. This is why, this is why, this is why you want to come into this profession. This is why you're interviewing to begin with, because you want to create those experiences. And what I'm stressing to you is think about your students beyond English, math, social studies, and science. Think about them as human beings who have goals and dreams and aspirations. And then we figure out how do we create meaningful experiences for them that layer in those core competencies, but also just create really, really cool people. Because we can do both. It is possible to walk and chew gum at the same time. It is possible to create a rock star academic while also creating a rock star cool kid at the same time. So I want you to think about all the experiences and all the opportunities that you will have to spend time in and around campus and in and around students that is beyond just the classroom environment, the classroom experience, whether that's coaching, whether that's leading a club, whether that's, whether that's creating some sort of a service opportunity. Those are the types of things that students, when they immerse themselves in that, it creates that school connectedness, it creates that belonging, but it also demonstrates, back to the interview, it demonstrates everything that a principal, that an assistant principal, that a grade level lead is looking for in a new colleague and a new professional. It's somebody who sees this as a profession that they're gonna invest time, effort, and energy into creating good human beings. It's what I'm looking for. It's what so many of my colleagues are looking for. Not somebody who just simply knows how to do instruction. That's an expectation. But are you somebody who can do instruction and also inspire children to see more in themselves, to do more, to go higher and higher than they ever could have expected for themselves? Can you create that while teaching math? Can you create that while teaching Spanish? Can you create that while teaching music? That's what we're looking for. So figure out ways to demonstrate how you'll have impact on students outside of simple achievement metrics, because that is what creates lasting and meaningful memories, experiences for all of our students, and that's what they deserve. So if you think about how you do that, and you think about how you leave that impact and that in the minds of all of the interview panels, that's what you want them thinking about when you leave the room. That's who you want them pondering. That's what keeps your name in their mind. So finding ways to live a lasting memory in the minds of the interview panel is the subject of this next video. So you have to check that out because it's gonna give you great strategies to leave a lasting impact as you leave your interview. And if you want more information, don't forget to check the description below for more information on coaching and resources and all the cool things within the principal leader community. It's always a pleasure to serve you all. We look forward to seeing you on the next one. So check out this next video. It's like right in here. And we'll see you on the next one.